reception. I am in the studio with Dr. Jason Azopardi, Dr. Mario DeMarco. Joining us from Malta is Dr. Andrew Borch Cardona, and from London, Professor Colin Lawrence, who is a former director of the Bank of England and a specialist on supervision of banks and risk management. And thank you very much both for being with us and joining us together. Pleasure, Leah. Nice to see you again. Good Pleasure, Leah. Good yeah. evening. Good evening, Colin. Thank you once again. Um, uh, uh, Andrew is obviously very familiar with what's going on. I know, Colin, that you read a lot about what's going on in the press. Um, perhaps um, I could pass over to Dr. DeMarco, who's the Shadow Minister of Finance, and uh, we can bring Colin up to scratch with what's happening today. Basically, uh, quick words. I'm sure Colin's familiar with Manival, which is the Council of Europe experts on the fight against anti-money laundering. Uh, plus, it's also the European branch of the Financial Action Task Force, the FATF. Uh, basically, last year, uh, the Manival basically issued a report uh, condemning the government's uh, unwillingness, really, to implement uh, the anti-money laundering legislation. So we had a lot of legislation in place, but it wasn't implemented. Mm. And we had classic cases mm. of FI reports basically indicating high-profile people such as the Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister, such as the Minister for Energy uh, within the Cabinet of the Prime Minister, such as the Financial Advisor of the Prime Minister, okay, being involved in basically activities with reasonable suspicion of money laundering, mm -hmm. okay? And these reports were issued, finalized, passed on to the police, and the police, for some reason, never took any action against these people. So no okay? action taken, Andrew. So these the experts said, one, there is an obvious unwillingness of your institutions to act Two, there is an inadequacy of your institutions. Thirdly, there's a lack of true autonomy yeah. of your real institutions, which makes them no institutions at all and no authorities at all, because any authority has yes. to be independent of the executive of government. Gov Manival was very generous with us, and they effectively gave us one year within which to bring our act together. If we don't get our act together, Malta is going to be grey listed. It will be on a list which is deemed to be of high risk to financial crime. We'll have the, the will be the first country within the EU which was ever put on the grey list. The countries on the grey list are countries like Botswana, Gambia, <laughs> Pakistan. These are the type of countries which are on this grey list. Mm -hmm. The reality is that if we end up on this grey list, any, intercom any company which is linked to Malta, even if it forms part of an international group, will suddenly be flagged as a high risk, exposing all the companies of that group, even if they have one subsidiary in Malta, to extreme due diligence, okay, which will make it basically Malta totally unattractive for any country to invest in or to touch remotely. Mm -hmm. So that will be the death toll of our financial services sector. Why? Because government preferred protecting three individuals than protecting the well-being of the financial services sector and protecting the reputation which was fought for by yes. the hard work yeah. of so many other serious financial services practitioners. Sure, sure. Andrew, uh, before we pass on to Colin, just to, before we ask Colin's advice, um, in a nutshell, can you bring us up to date with what's happening this week? We've heard it already from Dr. Atsopardi, but uh, perhaps uh, we can hear it from you also. Sure. What we, two things struck me this week. One, the eagerness with which the former head of the Economic Crime Unit, Ian Abdullah, accepted 
the Attorney General is not in a wink to go slow investigating Conrad Mitzi and Keith Kembri. He'll, they'll now come out and say, but he never said that, and the, the AG is actually saying, but I never said that. But frankly, I think it's very clear. The Economic Crime Unit was told, this and slow down, be careful, be very, very sure you know what you're doing, etc. Which to anybody who speaks police means lay off, be good. The second thing which struck me, though, was the sheer hypocrisy of our Prime Minister. He met um, questions, he, he rebutted questions from journalists about which minister had relations with that, sorry, I, I'm, I'm quoting Bill Clinton here, didn't have relations with anyone, etc., and which minister was too close, and which junior minister did, this, did that, whatever, um, by saying, listen, you can only um, uh, criticize them if they um, had these relationships, whatever they were, the sexual drinking buddies or whatever, I really don't care. Uh, after he was charged with the murder or, or involved in the murder accusations of Daphne Caruana Galizia, which frankly is a load of rubbish. As soon as we got to know that uh, Jürgen Fennec, the person we're talking about, was involved in this matter, he was slammed up in Cordine in now waiting trial. How could anyone have any sort of relationships whatsoever with him? Now, this hypocrisy has gone on. This sheer hypocrisy, nothing else. Suddenly, we've become uh, whiter than white, trying to get our act in order for Manival. Um, we're, we're scared, I was going to use a vulgarity, um, witless about uh, being found to be grey-listed, or even worse, black-listed. Prime Minister is now saying, no, we're going to get through this in flying colours. Well, fine. Because of this, we're suddenly starting to investigate throw out fines, get people to get their act in order. But for two and a half, three years, however long it's been since the Panama Papers, since Keith Kembri and Conrad Mitzi were caught with their Panama hats around their ankles, no, then nothing happened, because then Joseph Muscat was defending them. And now Robert Abela is defending Joseph Muscat. He used to be his advisor, now his defender. Whatever, again, one of these complex relationships which I can never understand. But the fact is, the only reason we're doing something about it, because we're now scared. We, the government is scared. We've been scared a long time. We've been scared the institutions don't stand up for us. The police don't stand up for us. No one stands up for us except ourselves. How often were Jason, myself, and various other people called names by everybody under the sun for being one of a couple of hundreds, tens of people who stood in the rain at Daphne's memorial in front of court? How often did they call us traitors? How often did they call us deluded pro-PM, me of all people, um, activists. Well, now that particular pigeon, is chicken, sorry, is coming home to roost. Yeah, that's Thank what it you. means. Hypocrisy and the sheer bloody-mindedness of the certain parts of the police. Thank Sorry, Colin, I sort of went on a bit there. Thank you very much, Colin. Um, thank you very much. Could you give us your views? Uh, on leadership, governance, um, reputational risk, when we're going through all these years of corruption in a country? Well, obviously, it's something any conflict of interest, and I hear a lot of conflict of interest in this, not knowing all the facts, obviously. And um, I would guess that... Um, it needs a total um, restructuring of the governance to remove conflicts of interest. As long as there's any conflict of interest, even if they didn't happen, then essentially the eyes in the beholder and um, a country or a bank can be downgraded, grey-listed or whatever. So, you know, it seems that Malta has got a crisis of leadership in their financial sector and they had better sort it out as quick as possible because if they don't, obviously, as the gentlemen have um, insinuated, um, they can be blacklisted, put on a grey list, put on all sorts of lists with countries who you don't necessarily want to be listed with and it can impact financial intermediation and capital flows into Malta. Um, I should just add, in the United Kingdom, um, they have refined 
MIFID II. They've added on, on conduct risk and on crime and bribery, they've added on another 32 um, different classes, um, which includes even trading in, in artifacts, in architectural goods, in stuff like this, plus cryptocurrency, and they are demanding governance of all of this. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I know you're talking about something which I'm not an expert in, no. on stuff going on, on conflict of interest, of ministers in government, etc. So I think Malta's got to sort this out. They should maybe appoint an external international committee to come in and resolve it. You mentioned cryptocurrencies, uh, Colin. Um, does yes. that open doors for more money laundering? So does it require more supervision from the Financial Services Authority? Um, you talking to me? Yes, so, yes, of course. Yes, of course it does. Um, it's now, as I said, there's a list of 33 um, different components of conduct risk in the United Kingdom. Actually, it just went out now in May 2020, um, and it's got a whole range of activities, including um, cryptocurrency. So it's a whole set of due diligence on banks uh, in this area. Um, but I've also been struck by the details regarding third party, it's always been there that third party dealings with countries that are grey listed or countries exactly like Pakistan, other countries in the world, um, Panama, um, etc., where the actual transaction might be not suspicious, but there's an appearance um, of suspicion. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is the governance and robustness of the governance, the board, how they behave, their risk management framework, um, and, um, you, you know, their value system. And anyone that's got any doubts, any bank, there are any doubts about these activities, um, is not going to get a license to operate or their license will be suspended. Dr. DeMarco, please feel free to ask Dr. Lawrence any questions that are relevant? You know, basically, uh, I mean, he can perhaps best explain to us all the actual implications which it would have were Malta to be grey listed on the financial services sector. As we all know, it, it, it's a critical sector for us. It's an important sector for us. It gives you high value jobs within this country. Uh, can he better explain to us in simple words for an international group which has a subsidiary registered in Malta or a holding registered in Malta, what are the implications to grey listing to that international group? Right. Colin. I can't talk formally what they would do, but I can only guess. Right now, just to understand banking, what's happened, and also with Corona on top of that, and also um, say the United Kingdom, but we won't talk necessarily about the United Kingdom. Let's talk about the globe. Um, if there are conflicts of interest, and particularly with ESG, which is around ethics, governance, um, and sustainability, any issues that aren't resolved are going to come under severe pressure. Okay, so I'm not giving you the formal what they would do, but I'm saying investors just won't invest um, in that economy. So it goes very, very deep into all financial intermediation funds management, okay? Malta need to, to score high so that their assets can be held in um, ESG portfolios, for example. In terms of banks, if the banks have got anything where there's conflict of interest, it's going to just get flagged. It's going to delay things going to Malta. I've seen these sort of things happening. The other point is, if, if it wasn't grey-listed, people are going to demand more assets, more collateral, which is actually an outflow of liquidity from those particular banks. And they're also at risk of having a run on the banks. If there are any foreign investors and even local investors in those banks, they're going to pull in investments, and then furthermore, deposits will go. So you can get a massive run on Malta. Now, to avoid that, banks will just cease lending and put limits not to lend anymore.
And I said that from any official capacity. That would be my view on what I'm hearing and reading about some of the crises going on in Malta. Andrew, your comments? Well, um, what can one say? If we do get grey listed, we're already we're up the usual creek without a paddle. Even if we're not, however, the problem is that we're known. No longer is the world based on what somebody managed to read in an old copy of the <laughs> Times yeah. of London somewhere. What, have, what we're saying now is probably being looked at Oh, well, be looked at by Colin overseas, that's for sure. But other people are looking in. This is, we're now a village. We're all sitting around the same uh, table in the same bar and everything's happening. Yeah. I mean, the, the sheer, you know, guys, as a word I've used already, the sheer hypocrisy of this government is something amazing. Only today, they st we've been told, aren't we lucky, the passport scheme is going to be changed. And people are going to be told to do what they should have done in the first place, that is, live in Malta before they get a passport. Oh, for heaven's sake. Who in God's name are you trying to kid? You are doing this only because of the money, the risk and nothing else. It's the same all over. We can't go on like this. Joseph Muscat is being defended tooth and nail by everybody, well, by everybody, by Robert Abela. This is the rest of the party, so he's pretty annoyed with him, but his former advisor is, is covering for him. I mean, we, we, this has become beyond a joke, well, it's been beyond a joke for three, four years, but now it's become ridiculous. Everything happens, and we're told everything is fine. We're the best country in the world for controlling COVID. Yeah, right. We're the best country in the world for financial regulation. Yeah, right. We're the best country in the world for everything. Sure we are. And look, we're, and ask people abroad what they think about us. What do you think about us, Colin? Well, I'm listening to the unraveling, um, you know, accusations. Um, which obviously m must be credible. And um, in order to get out of this, I think that the country has to remove any conflicts of interest, which the gentlemen are all saying. So I don't understand why the government or the central bank, or, um, and we don't know, remember, you are um, regulated by the um, SSM or the ECB. So it's just better to sort all of these issues out and to strengthen governance at all costs. Governance is equivalent to having capital and liquidity. So banks are always at risk, okay, if you don't sort out these issues. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, just a few words to close, Dr. Ratsapardi, tonight. Very briefly, I mean, we should not be here. We are at this juncture in our history with the threat of uh, grey listing. I mean, listening to the words of, the, of Dr. Uh, Colin, you know, basically investors will not be investing in Malta if Malta is effectively uh, grey listed. Why? All this because government has fostered a culture of impunity, which led to the assassination of a journalist and the assassination of a reputation which, as we have feared, had, has taken us years and years, maybe even decades, to build. I mean, up till 2013, the reputation of Malta was up there. Today, six, seven years down the line, it's at the other end of the spectrum. Sure, sure. What was interesting, Colin did say that even if we're not grade listed on Manival, we still have a lot of problems. He did say that. Yeah, we yeah. shouldn't be here. Yes. We we, yes. There should never have been a critical report by Manival yes. against yes. us. Yes. There has never been a critical report by Manival against us. Mm -hmm. This is the first time. Yes. Okay, and this is why we've been saying as an opposition, ultimately, reputation is key. Mm -hmm. Okay, and everything that government did over the past seven years was throwing away and putting at risk this reputation. I mean, when the passport scheme was introduced in Parliament, Jason and myself and, and the <laughs> whole opposition were up in arms saying, listen, this is going to ruin our reputation mm -hmm. because citizenship is not for sale. You earn citizenship. You don't pay for it. Yes. And, and, and these are the consequences. When government tried to make Malta the cryptocurrency island really? of the Mediterranean, again, Totally high key. But you see, that's totally opening doors to more money laundering. As well, well, uh, exactly. So and this is the type of investment yes. we don't want. Yes. We have made the success of ourselves in the past before by, by, by working hard and by going for things which are not high risk, we're low risk, okay? Maybe may do not take us over the moon in terms of money, but made this country work 
properly. We had a, a growth rate which was above the EU. But now they wanted to grow too quickly, too fast. Thank and you very much. And this is what happens when you try to run too fast. Thank you very much. The Thanks time's so much. never enough when you're here. Thank you very much. Trust. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm with Dr. Jason Atsapadi, Dr. Mario De Marco, and I thank our guests from abroad and Dr. Borch Cardona. I wish you a lovely weekend. I'll see you next week.